Hello guys, today I'm working on the 64 gigabyte uh, Kingston card. I got my uh, Deep Spar USB stabilizer. Uh, so the device comes up, but we get this message that the uh, source device has aborted initialization and we do not see capacity come up. So the NAND most likely is problematic. We're gonna have to work with that NAND now. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it on this corner first and start splitting it apart. So this is gonna be an interesting case. I'm familiar with the circuit board. What we have here is a Fison 8210 controller. It's a pretty complex controller and uh, PC3000 actually builds these cards really well. Uh, the goal would be to get a clean read of both of these chips first and uh, then start the assembly. So this is U2, U3, this is chip one, this is gonna be chip two. I'm just gonna mark them real quick. This is their sequential order. Could there be a disconnect? I guess we'll found, find out later when we remove them. If we see that there are any damaged pads, we may actually try to uh, get the card repaired. But uh, based on what I'm seeing here, I feel like the issue is with the memory itself. So to pull these chips, I'm gonna use this jig, but I'm barely gonna clench it. So looking at the board, I don't see any no, uh, broken pads, so I don't think the issue was with connection. We get this uh, LGA socket, get the reader connected to it. All right, so we got the Shiba chips and there are two parts per each chip. So there are gonna be four chips total. So each part is 16. Yeah, we got a bit of errors. Um, if you look here, we zoom in, you see these dots, occasional dots here and there. So probably the chip is not that great. And set it to read. I'm just gonna read it with the optimal settings. It's gonna pick up all of the uh, information about the chip uh, from the database. And uh, it's gonna take about an hour to read each part. Right now we got chip two in the reader, so we're gonna be working with part two and three. Uh, go into map, and we have 16.66 gigabytes of uh, content in here. It's been error corrected already. Let's have a look at how much of that content is not corrected yet. So invalid sector map, and we see it's 500 megabytes. It's a um, pretty big number, but I'm pretty sure we can get that uh, ruled out quick. I have a little bit of experience with these chips and I know what kind of things they may like and may not like. 
So let's go ahead and uh, uh, set reread for all of them. I'm gonna go with 99, that's maximum amount of rereads uh, that I can set up. We're gonna choose quick. We can see it's correcting some stuff, but um, mostly uh, the screen is uh, staying red, right? So we got some green uh, pages here and there. And uh, let me show you what happens when a little bit of heat is applied to the chip. I'm gonna put the fume extraction on first. So right now I have my heater set up at 100 degrees at full air flow. And I'm just gently heating it up from the top. Now you see how much difference that makes. Our entire screen is getting green almost. So running it with a little bit of heat is going to help us improve the quality of this read. So this is the setup. Um, I usually use my uh, station and uh, the holes for air. I just kind of uh, stick it between the uh, eyepieces in a microscope. So it creates this mount, uh, so it's completely hands-free system. You can actually adjust the height with the dial on the microscope, which is very convenient. As you guys can see, 500 megabytes uh, plus of bad sectors we had. Now the error correction is done. Let's uh, build a map of invalid sectors. And we have less than a megabyte left. Read those out as well. Full, full extraction, everything that's in there is cleaned out. That's excellent. Uh, now we can move on to the next segment, and that's gonna be part three. I'm gonna build a map for that. Um, sub map for invalids. This one is 247 megabytes, a bit smaller. And we're gonna wait that, that through as well. I'm sure by the, di by the time we're done, we're gonna be very close to having almost no bad sectors in the chip too. So at this point, it looks like uh, we hit a plateau for the correction. Occasionally, we get a page that gets fixed. But uh, I think at this point, if we stop the process and narrow it down to see how uh, much is left, build the invalid sectors map. And uh, it's down to three megabytes. So let's try to read those, not in the um, uh, express way, but the uh, uh, maximum threshold. Yeah, we should get better results this way. That's it. So I think it's all cleaned out. Let's see what we're left with. Nothing. Whole thing is perfectly clean. So now that it's done, we can uh, take out the uh, chip 2 from the cradle. Build a map of invalid sectors on part 0. Nine megabytes. All clean. This one is pretty dominant, 1.3 gigs. It's the worst one that we have. It looks like we're starting to plateau here. My guess, if I had to guess why this card failed, and I get this uh, question asked quite frequently, uh, why do memory cards fail? This is why, guys. You see on the screen, one out of the four parts is taking way, way longer to correct. It has way more defects than others. And uh, just generally, it seems to be quite stubborn uh, and will uh, require some 
additional tricks to manipulate the read process to improve it. Um, I think it's safe to say that maybe we should put this on pause. Um, 1.3 gigs uh, that we had in bad sectors before. What do we have now? The heat's been running all this time, so we have 300 megabytes left. It's a bit more responsive at uh, 3.6 volts. Finally, after all of these manipulations, uh, I was able to obtain a perfect readout. The convenience of this tool is that it has this XOR analysis. You can see that these numbers here overweigh for the first candidate. With the XOR, we already have a page transformation applied, which is great. We don't have to do that. We could always try to do that manually. It's not a big deal to figure that out. But uh, since it already applies uh, and I've tested it before, it works great. So I'm just going to keep it for now. If I run into any issues, we can always delete that step. So now, since we got four parts in here, we need to figure out whether or not the order of them is correct. So how do we do that? We need to um, probably going to go here and run raw recovery and we want to find MBR because the part that contains MBR is going to be the very first part because that's what everything starts with. All right, this is the sequence. Very signature uh, element for data conversion for this controller is the uh, synchronization of channels. We're gonna add this, and uh, from the dropdown, we can select our FISEN controller. Uh, here we go. And the, um, let's check for interleave here. It's joined it by pages. And our sector size is gonna be one. Yes, we're on the right path. Now the final move, again, we're gonna add trend by pages element. And here uh, we're gonna run uh, raw recovery at this point. But we do have something positive coming our way. So yeah, we see bigger files coming, starting to come up and they're JPEGs and they're, they're checked for really good size. I'm not really concerned about these uh, uh, red headers uh, on JPEGs, especially on smaller sizes. That could be something that was on the card before it was deleted. Um, but these large sizes, they're coming up consistent. That's a really good sign. So let's stop this process um, and try to open one of these files that is high resolution file shot with uh, Canon uh, 5D. Uh, open it up and it's opening. Our mix has been eliminated. Now it's just a matter of building a translator for it and for the translator uh, on PS8210, uh, we're gonna go into extensions and select default settings. We have XFAT um, partition available to us. If we go and explore it, we can see the DCIM folder is here. Uh, it's got subdirectories for the camera folder and all of our JPEGs have green headers. This was an excellent turnout of the procedure. Uh, I gotta say that the most challenging part was making sure that uh, all uh, four parts get a clean read. Three parts went really easy but one I struggled for for nearly an entire day. And if you guys have any specific questions uh, to the procedure, feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you lost your data on the memory card and you need it back, link in the description will take you to our website where you can request those services. For those who are new, hello and welcome, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the content. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys all in the next episode.